just the other day we had the reading which said that he who confesses with his lips that Jesus Christ is Lord shall be saved. And I mentioned that it was important to place that in the larger context of what scripture says elsewhere. So this reading from the seventh chapter of Matthew being a prime example. Our Lord himself says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. This verse really suffices almost on its own, but if we needed to place it alongside another, there is one of our Lord's injunctions which says that if you love me, keep my commandments. And so part of truly believing in him means to take everything he says at his word and not to tamper with it, not to accommodate his words to fashions or trends or, or what people like or dislike. He says that if you believe in me, you will do these things. You will hear my voice. You will obey my commandments. You will do the will of my Father in heaven. And so there are many people that do profess our Lord with their lips. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Yes, please God that he is. But we must go further and say that if he is our Savior, we must do what he tells us. And it's so tragically common in Christianity today to bend the words, the very clear words of our Lord or of inspired scripture so as to accommodate things of the times and especially moral things, things, strict teachings perhaps of the scripture that are no longer uh, easily embraced. And then we say, well, the church must also get with the times or God is all merciful and so on and so forth. All sorts of different things, but he is very clear in what he says here. Today as we celebrate the great missionary, St. Francis of Xavier, he, like so many of the other saints, would be a good one to invoke to intercede for us. St. Francis Xavier was one of the greatest of all missionaries, for which he was named the patron of missionaries. He was one of the co-founders of the Society of Jesus, known as the Jesuits, along with Ignatius of Loyola. He traveled extensively in the East and became one of the patrons of the Indies. He also led missions into Japan. It was his great hope to also evangelize in China, but he, he died before he could do so. One of the things I think that marks out St. Francis Xavier is the keen sense that he had of his responsibility in evangelizing, a responsibility that most of us don't feel quite as keenly. It was said that at times he would spur his horse on even faster to reach his next missionary land because he felt that if he could arrive there but five minutes sooner, that would be five minutes more people that he could evangelize that might be saved. And we tend to fall back so easily on God's providence. Well, God will provide for everybody. God will, nothing escapes God's providence. And it's true, nothing escapes God's providence. And we ourselves are a part of that providence. And we exercise what theologians would call instrumental causality. We may be the means by which someone else can come to salvation. And here's an important point. I think that moderns often tend to think that as long as nobody does anything terribly wrong, then they're not in danger. Their, their salvation is not in jeopardy. Well, they're, they're good people. They're fine. They didn't do anything wrong. And really, the, the picture that scripture present, presents is much different. It says that all men have sinned and are deprived of the glory of God. That we're all in a state of sin. We're all in need of redemption. Basically, we're all guilty seeking an acquittal or a mitigated sentence. And our Lord has given to each one of us who have received his revelation an opportunity for that mercy. But by default, we all start off on the wrong side of the fence. It's not that we all start off in the happy pastures and someone has to do something egregious so as to lose that place. We all start off in the wrong pasture. And we must either hear or spread the voice of the Good Shepherd that we might be brought to a happier pasture. And so St. Francis Xavier felt, as I said, very keenly this burden of evangelization and probably understood quite well that parable of the talents, which you'll recall the master gave to each of his servants 
five talents, two talents, one talent, and he came back and asked to return. And one might think, as that last servant did, well, why is he so intent upon getting a return? Why is it incumbent? Why is it an obligation upon the servants to go and invest the master's money? Is he a greedy master? Is he a demanding taskmaster? And perhaps the real reason is because he's not speaking about money. God doesn't need to expand his wealth, doesn't need to expand his riches. The obligation that he's putting on each one of his servants, as I've mentioned before, first and foremost, is to be an instrumental clause, to multiply the grace that we've been given. In other words, St. Francis Xavier, knowing that he had been given some of these talents of grace, knew that the master would ask, what did you do with them? And what of all of those people that were crying out for mercy, for redemption, and I gave you the means to do it? And this is why the spiritual works of mercy are greater than the corporal works of mercy. Although we must clothe the naked, we must feed the hungry, we must give drink to the thirsty, what is a greater hunger than for the bread of life, a greater thirst than for truth, a greater nakedness than not being clothed in grace? And so St. Francis surely felt all of these things. And to this day, he is venerated in a particular way in the Church of the Jesu in Rome, the Jesuit Church. And there you can find the forearm and hand of St. Francis Xavier, one of those idiosyncratic Catholic devotions. But there is his arm and his hand that is still on display in that reliquary. Why? Because it was said that 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 arm, that hand, by itself baptized over 300,000 new Christians. Can you imagine? Over a quarter million people baptized by that hand. And so, if the parable of the talents is any indication of all people, surely, after realizing the talents that had been given to him, and after having made such a tremendous return to the Master, he surely would have heard those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter now into your master's joy. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.